How you doing Facebook and YouTube? It has been several months since we've chatted and uh, I've got uh, some people emailing me and Facebooking me asking how the layout is coming along so I realize I'm way overdue but I've been kind of busy. Uh, <laughs> busy working on the layout that is as you can see. Uh, tonight will be an uh, operational video I think. As you can see we've got a undecorated S2 that I found at the Batavia train show along with uh, some passenger cars that are going around right now as we film this. Um, I've also uh, gotten to be good friends with uh, another train enthusiast, uh, Brian, and he uh, comes over usually one or two times a, a week or once, once or twice a week and uh, Last time he was here, we were here until 1 o'clock in the morning, and the time before that, he was here until 3 o'clock in the morning, and we just work on the layout. And it's a lot of fun. He's a great guy. And this is kind of the project that he's taken over on, is this old dilapidated building and making trees and ground cover. Uh, the idea is, with this old building here, we're going to get a crane or a wrecker or something like that, and that is going to be placed in over here and then uh, they'll be loading these uh, two cars right here in the bottom of the frame uh, as if they're loading the remains of the building inside those cars. So I think it's kind of a neat concept. He has done an absolutely incredible job. These trees I'd like to talk about uh, real quick are goldenrod. Believe it or not, they're goldenrod and what he does is he trims them uh, from their natural state to make them smaller so that they're more to scale and then he takes uh, Elmer's um, spray glue and he sprays them and then after that he sprinkles on a, a light powdering of green ground foam from Woodland Scenic and then once he does that then he sprays them again and then he sprinkles on a little bit heavier uh, textured ground foam from Woodland Scenic uh, with different colors and it gives uh, the shapes and shadows and uh, then he sprays them again and then he covers them I believe a fourth time with the, f uh, the finer ground foam and um, and then he pokes a little hole in the uh, the homosote that we've got down here and uh, a little drip of glue and that is their new permanent home but you can see the coloring in this tree is just incredible and uh, it's all homemade and he has done an awesome, awesome job. I just can't express how real they look. And then he's got some shrubs in there uh, to make it look like an overgrown, kind of wild look uh, to it. And uh, I think it's pretty neat. So, uh, and then down here, as the train goes by, uh, the other night when we were here quite late, I put in some, uh, this is plaster and I just mix in uh, brown paint with it. Now, when you see the finished product, this, my friends, is the finished product, the way this is textured with the, the ballast and everything. So, uh, when it's all done, uh, it will look like that. So this is the beginning stages, and when I'm finished, it will look like this. Pretty cool. But the, yeah, these are the rocks that I painted the other night and I placed in. Uh, I was really happy with the coloring. I think I have to go over them a little bit, uh, a little bit darker though. This one looks especially good. That looks pretty natural. Considering that it's just white, uh, white plaster, looks pretty good. So uh, over here, let's move on to the Bootsy's Bubble Factory, which is a play on words because you don't manufacture bubbles. Uh, Bootsy is the name of my cat who is pretty kooky and uh, it's only fitting that he has a factory named after him of something that just doesn't exist because he's just kind of crazy and off the wall. So that's, uh, that's Bootsy's Bubble Factory. Uh, and that is a kit that I bought, uh, I got a good deal on it at the Hamburg train show um, back in February I think it was. Uh, so the guy that sold that to me was pretty generous and gave me a good deal on it. And then of course I've got all kinds of rolling stock and locomotives. Uh, there's a lot of DCC locomotives mixed in with DC. 
Uh, there's a lot of Conrail engines. There's some Erie, uh, Erie engines. I do have to admit, all the Conrails are Brian's. Uh, a lot of the rolling stock is Brian's. A lot of the stock is rolling stock is mine as well. Uh, and the most of the the BN, the Burlington Northern, the green engines are mine, but all the blue ones are his. And then over here we've got some Burlington Northern uh, cars, box cars. Those are all Brian's too. He's got a a thing for Burlington Northern, as do I. So we kind of feed each other feed off each other with that. And then you can see as a whole the yard that I was working on has come light years since you've seen it last. It's pretty full right now with cars. They're really uh, mixed in. There's no rhyme or reason to them. I'm just simply using them as a storage facility because I've got so much stock right now that in an effort to keep the main line clear so that we can run a train around, uh, I've just got everything shoved in wherever it fits, it fits. So but uh, once we get that sorted out, we'll have, you know, boxcars where boxcars should go, and then covered hoppers where covered hoppers should go, and so on and so forth. Uh, right here in this area, I was talking to Brian the other night, and he's going to uh, put in a grain elevator for, uh, like, a feed mill. And um, that'll be another facility that will serve us with most likely covered hoppers or something like that. So... Uh, I'm excited to see that when he gets that done. He says he's going to use white PVC pipe and and make it make it good. This area over here, this uh, this new area, uh, I'm not sure if it was in the other video or not. If it was, it was blue styrofoam. Uh, it's since been built up and we've put in plaster on it. This is an, again something else that Brian's worked on the other night, um, and he's he's covered it with plaster, and it looks pretty good. What we're going to do is the idea is when you stand at it from this angle uh, it will be covered with trees on the top, a really thick presence of trees to make sure that you can't see beyond it. So when the train goes where it is presently down here it will vanish. No uh, no magic joke there intended but it will, it will disappear from view so that when you come over to this side over here it will be a totally different scene, so it'll make the layout appear larger than it is. Um, and then over here, of course, will be uh, a train depot. Uh, right here, actually, later tonight, I'm going to be ripping this track out and then putting in uh, a number eight uh, switch by Pico. And this will be a passenger siding along here, and then it will tie in up here by the tunnel portal. So that'll tie back in, but this is all going to be passenger. In here so we've got freight on the lower level up here and then passenger on the upper level here with the passenger station and then uh, you know we've got styrofoam all over the place it's not real pretty but this is what it looks like when it's under construction so um, I guess that's about it we really haven't done too much over here the mountain is still the mountain um, we've talked a little bit about what we're gonna do there we've got right here I don't know if you can see that but that is going to be uh, an outlook where people can, like a tourist attraction, where people can go up on top of the mountain and uh, have a picnic. I'm going to have some some tents and campfire, people around campfires and people hiking and things like that. and Kind of have it a, a touristy type uh, mountain. But um, then here are the switches I'm going to put in later tonight. So that'll be a project and a half, I think. That'll be... That'll, I think that'll shut the railroad down for at least a week because I've got to pull pull this up and um, um, I lost my train of thought. Uh, pull it up and get the new switches in and lay uh, lay the foam and get, this is on a, a two percent grade. Right now it's not flat and level, so that I think the grade is going to present uh, a challenge. Uh, to make sure that it runs smoothly. So that's tonight's project, I think. But Brian should be here, and I would say probably an hour, half hour to an hour. So uh, maybe when he's here, I'll shoot some more video, and and then you can put a face with a name. But this is it. Uh, I'm very, very happy to show everyone. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's come a long way, and uh, maybe go back and take a look at the other videos and see as a comparison 
but um, it, it looks pretty cool, I think. And uh, I've got the S2 pulling the passenger cars. Um, I guess I should comment on the S2. I'm thinking about uh, painting it either 75, uh, New York and Lake Erie 75. Um, number 75 is currently right down, right now down in Titusville, Pennsylvania, and it's painted as the Oil Creek and Titusville lines. But 75 originated in Gwanda, well it didn't originate in Gwanda, but it was in Gwanda for a number of years, painted in the NYLE colors, the New York and Lake Erie, which is the, the passenger coaches here that you see. So I'm thinking it would be kind of sharp to make it the, the New York and Lake Erie as that, that particular la railroad has a, a soft spot in my heart. So uh, I would like to make it 308 and paint it in the New York and Lake Erie, but uh, and this is for people who are into trains to really understand this, but 308 is an S1, uh, not an S2. In this undecorated engine that I bought here that's currently running that you're looking at is an S2, not an S1. So. Uh, for anybody that's into trains, that's just a big no-no. You can't, you can't have an S2 and it painted as an S1 if you're going to be prototypical. So, lots to figure out there. So anyway, uh, I guess that's it. We're running on 11 and a half minutes, so uh, hopefully, hopefully I didn't bore you too much. But uh, this is the layout, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. So, I'll take more still shots and video later tonight with Brian, and we'll catch up with you then. Have a good night.